Welcome to online worship with Maxwell Street Presbyterian Church for January 3rd, 2021. We are so glad you're joining us to, for worship from wherever and whenever you're worshiping. Though we may still remain physically apart, we are always connected with one another as Christ's body through God's spirit and love. We are a few days into the new year already, yet there are still a few days left of the Christmas season. In the life of the church, the Christmas season lasts for 12 days from Christmas to Epiphany. This extended Christmas time is a gift to us to look for and celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, and the ways we are needing God to show up for us with healing, justice, love, mercy, community. May we have hope in God today, look for and find God amongst us. It's a tradition at Maxwell Street for a Sunday after Christmas to be a kind of casual Sunday. It started one year when Christmas Sunday fell, when Christmas Day fell on a Sunday, kids were invited to come in their pajamas. And since then, there's been a day where worship has been more casual. Worship will be like that today. The pieces, there'll be many pieces of worship that'll be participatory, that'll ask you to stretch or to participate in some kind of way. And since most of us has been, have been worshiping most Sundays from our pajamas, we're already prepared for this Sunday. Today is also a communion Sunday. You may want to stop the video now to find something in your home that can be the bread and cup for you. Any kind of bread you may have and any kind of drink that you can share. Pretty soon, um, education opportunities and fellowship opportunities for all ages will pick up back again at Maxwell Street. Adult Sunday school classes, youth group, kids Sunday school classes. You can find out more information about these things in the weekly email, and you can sign up for that email on our website. We start each Sunday by bringing in the light of Christ. You may want to pause the video again if you have not to light a candle where you are to set this time and space apart as sacred. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Please join us in the call to worship. As you are able, embody your spirit. Use your arms to stretch along with this embodied call to worship. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. We reach out. <laughs> Knowing you are beyond time itself. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. We reach up. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you shine on all the people like the sun. The world came to be through him. We reach around in a circle. Please. Knowing all creation is of you. From his fullness, we all have received grace upon grace. We reach down. Love me. Giving thanks for even the ground we stand on. Let us hug ourselves tight. I'm hugging so tight. Giving thanks for our bodies too. Let us worship the God of earth and of heaven.
We celebrate God being born as a baby on Christmas. God came to earth and reminded us God is all around us. God is within us, in front of us, behind us, beneath us, above us. When we pray a prayer to repent to God, that means to turn around. Sometimes, even though God is all around us, we feel far away from God. But we can always get closer to God. God is always close to us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of mercy, you are A to Z. You are the beginning and end. You ask us to turn around and go away from things that are not of you. You ask us to go towards things that are of you. What is not of you? Keeping too much for ourselves, being afraid, helping ourselves more than others, what is of you? Sharing, having hope, helping others. You ask us to go towards things that are of you to make life better for all people, not to make life hard. Give us the strength and heart to look for you, follow you, and go towards you. Amen. Now, as you're able, embody your spirit, stand up, turn completely in a circle. Take a step forward or to the side, and maybe even sit in a dif different seat than you were in for the rest of worship. Family of God, God's mercy and love and forgiveness are an ending, as new and fresh as every sunrise. You are loved and always welcome, close to God. Amen. This week, we're trying a version of the passing of the peace. Take out your phone tablet or go to the computer and send a short text or email to a friend, church friend, or family member who's been on your heart or who you miss. If you can't do so now, make a note to yourself to do so later. God is the God of all who keeps us connected and draws us closer together. Reach out and spread God's love and peace. Pause worship for just a moment to take the time to pass God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Please join us in the prayer for openness to God's word. As you're able, in body or spirit, each time you hear or see the word open, open up your arms, hands, or heart. We come to hear your word to us, O oh God. Open our hearts. Open our minds. Open all that we are. Help us to draw near. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. Listen now for a word from God. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. This is the written testimony to the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today, we're going to read a story together. The story is called The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. You may be familiar with this story. It's an old one, a classic. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out, like this. He walked with his toes pointing in, like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that he could make a new track. It was a stick, a stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight. But he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. It's 
So he made a smiling snowman. And he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall. They went out together into the deep, deep snow. The end. In the story we just read together, Peter experiences a few different kinds of time during his one snowy day. First, he wakes up and it's morning time. Then he starts to play in the snow, dragging his feet slowly. It's playtime and Peter loses track of time because he's having so much fun moving slowly and playing outside. Do you ever lose track of time when you're playing outside or having fun in your room? Peter realizes he's not old enough for the snowball fight. In a few more years' time, he'll be able to play with the older kids. Peter uses his imagination to become a mountain climber, and maybe he feels like he's in a totally different time and place. Then it's time to go inside. It's bath time. It's bedtime, and before he knows it, it's playtime again. Did you know that Christmas isn't just one day? Christmas is actually 12 days. The song, The 12 Days of Christmas, is actually about the 12 days after Christmas, not before. All during Advent, we're waiting for Christmas, but not just for December 25th. It's a whole short season of time. Christmas being a longer, slower time than just one day teaches us something important about Christmas. When God became a person, became baby Jesus, God showed us that every little part of our life and the world around us has a little bit of God in it. We can use more than just one day to slow down and practice looking for God during Christmas. Sometimes life gets so busy, or we're stuck doing the same things every day, or we're having so much fun and time is passing quickly. All of these things happen to you and to me often. Getting busy or stuck in a rut or having fun, and we forget to notice God all around us. Sometimes maybe we're too sad or angry or overwhelmed to feel or believe that God is all around us. We read a scripture today from the book of Ephesians that said, At God's fullness of time, God will gather everything up together, everything in heaven and on earth. The scripture said that this is God's plan that God showed us in Jesus. Well, remember, it's true. Christmas shows us heaven and earth coming together as God, as a human, as Jesus. That is God's one-day plan. 
all of heaven and earth coming together. Until then, we get little glimpses of heaven and earth together when we slow down and look for God all around us, in anything, in everything. But seeing God is a muscle. You have to use it more often for it to get stronger. Sometimes God shows up in wonderfully clear and beautiful ways, but a lot of times we find God because we were looking, and we had gotten good at seeing God in all sorts of places from our practice. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for Christmas time. Thank you for time with people who love us and for gifts that make us feel loved, and for the beauty of winter. Help us to take time every day to practice looking for you all around us. Amen. There's a few more days of Christmas time left. I pray you're able to find beauty, comfort, or the challenge that you need in God and everything around you. But most of all, I pray you remember that God's time, too, is both of heaven and of earth. It is painful in many ways how slow and long it may be that suffering or separation from those we love goes on and on. Yet God is also making true and real the end of the story, right from the beginning and even throughout the middle, too. All that is of God, that has been and will be, coming together in small hopes, mercies, love, in nature, creativity, people, every kind. Let the mystery of God of heaven and earth, God of every age, in all things, humble us and draw us closer to God in these last days of Christmas. To practice looking for God and for the mystery of God, to see and to hope for heaven and earth as one, today we will practice Visio Divina in worship. You may be familiar with Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina means divine reading. You may Visio Divina means divine seeing. These and other practices are tools for us to use as we look for God in words, images, and the world around us. They invite us to use our imagination, follow our instincts, listen to our gut as we go in deeper into a text or image. Together as a congregation, we'll look at the following image and, as a, and I'll ask you a series of questions. If a question doesn't resonate for you, feel free to ignore it and follow whatever train of thought seems to strike you. Let us open our hearts to how God may show up to us today. As you gaze at the image, notice your breath and your body. Simply be present to the image and allow it to speak to your heart without any particular agenda. It may speak to you in words or wordlessly. How do you feel looking at the image? If you had to describe the image in a sentence or two, silently to yourself, what would you say? If you were in the image, where would you place yourself? Do you get a glimpse of the sacred from this image? Is God speaking to you in this image?
Does a name for God arise for you from this image? In silence, sit with what you have received. May God show up in expected and unexpected ways, places and times for you this day and every day. You are connected by God's presence all around you, to God's spirit, to heaven, to all of what has been and will be. God showed us this through Jesus, heaven and earth as one. We will taste and see this at the communion table too where what is most essential about God, unending welcome, love, and mercy, is given in what is essential to our earthly life, bread and drink. Family of God, it's Christmas time still. Let us see and find God all around. Having heard God's word and thought about the ways that we look for God in the world, let us give to God's work in the world through Maxwell Street. We appreciate the ways that you continue to be generous to the church through your thoughtfulness, your energy, your gifts. You continue to make possible all that we do as a church for our community and to support one another. You can give to Maxwell Street online or by sending a check to the church. Freely we have received. Freely give. Welcome to this table. Welcome to the table you have in your own home. Welcome to Christ's table, which is in all of our homes. It doesn't necessarily have to be in church at Maxwell Street. It can be in your home, in your kitchen. The important thing is that we are sharing the body and the blood of Christ, the gifts that we all receive. People do come from north and south and east and west they all come to the table, to Christ's table, 
to this table. I want you to enjoy this moment being at home, celebrating the Lord's Supper in your own way, in your own home. So as we gather together, let us do this in remembrance of Christ. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God. You who danced upon the waters before the great first flash of light and life. You who set the planets into motion, the winds and the currents of the ocean. You also know every hair on our head, every bird of the field. And your love is with us yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forever and ever. During these last days of the season of Christmas, as we celebrate the gift of your presence with us, as close as our next breath, as surprising as volunteer vegetable vines, as diverse as humankind, we pray for the people and places which seem far away from the life you hope for. For all who are suffering this day, we pray. For the people in countries experiencing widespread violence, in recovering from disaster, we pray for safety, provision, and an end to greed and violence. For all who are seeking diagnosis, working through chronic pain or illness, anxiety or depression, undergoing treatment, grieving or recovering from trauma, we pray for healing, peace, and an end to pain and tears. For all experiencing the violence of not enough, not enough money to provide for themselves and their family. Not enough help to care for their loved ones at risk or with mental illness. Not enough support to stay sober today. Not enough of a lifeline to get out of an abusive relationship. For all of these, we pray for safety, provision, and an end to poverty, addiction, and abuse. For those who are suffering the most at the hand of ongoing systemic racism, discrimination against people who are LGBTQ, and a painfully inaccessible immigration system. For families grieving their loved ones gone too soon. For refugee individuals and families in unsafe living conditions. Separated from one another. And for anyone living in fear or without the full dignity that is their right as a child of God, we pray for safety, provision, peace, joy, and an end to the systems of discrimination that harm us all. Be ever near to us, God. Make yourself plain, for it is so hard to see where you are amidst the fog of busyness, grief, loneliness, and violence. Forgive us when we become uncentered on you and your love for us and all of creation. Give us the strength this day and every day to pause, seek your spirit, and follow as you guide us to enjoy your creation, uplift the downtrodden, support one another in love, and give generously to those who need it. Unite us in hope for your world and love for one another as we pray each day and now with one voice, the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, 
giving it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of this meal that nourishes our body and spirit together. We thank you for the gift of Jesus, who shows us that all of life is sacred. May this meal strengthen our bodies and help us to take heart as we face each day with hope for your kingdom come. May we welcome all to your table, just as you have welcomed us. Amen. May the mystery of Christmas, of God with us, help us to find God around us often and in unexpected places. May the mystery of God yesterday, today, and forever give us hope in God's kingdom growing here and now. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace 
streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues of power. Raise the mountain, fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging.